etc. Um, so I want you to definitely understand that though we are few in numbers, each one of us touches a village of people. So very important to learn the information so that you can be a conduit to others learning the information. So I always like to start each of our sessions by asking the question, what was your blood sugar number this morning? Yours was what? 6.7? 6 6.7. Okay. Something's wrong with your meter. Because that isn't a, that, that's not a meter reading. Well, it's, it's called the doctor's reading. Okay. So you didn't, you didn't test this morning? Madam, no. This morning. that 
we, I'm hoping to compel everyone to do is to test your blood. Test your blood every morning, whether you're unaware as to whether or not your blood sugar is high, you're just a health enthusiast, and you want to um, learn to include monitoring your blood as a mechanism for achieving good health or maintaining good health. Because blood sugar drives everything. It drives all other causes of mortality. As you can imagine, right, the blood is circulating throughout the body. Throughout the body, it's touch, touching all of your tissues. And if the blood is high in glucose, then it's doing damage to the circulatory system. So we are really fortunate to be living in a time where we can purchase a blood sugar monitor, we can blood, we can test every morning. Easy. It's easy to do. It's accessible. Yes. Blood sugar. An example right here. Yes, we have blood sugar monitor kits available for purchase on the site. They're just $50 for them. So managing and knowing that number every day will help inform you as to how what you're eating and drinking is affecting your blood. Okay. Other than that, we can look good on the outside. We can even feel good because some people are asymptomatic. And yet, our blood sugar is high. And so knowing that information is very important. So I always like to start off with that. So again, I want to review the visual aids here to say that taking good care of yourself, I want you to include, because most people say, I eat right, I walk. We consider those kinds of things to be the activity of taking good care of ourselves. I want you to include in that blood sugar test. If you take the care of your blood and your insulin levels with knowledge and practices. So you're in class today for the knowledge. Once you get the knowledge, you then have to put it into action with your practices. When we eat or drink, our blood sugar does what? It rises. And when it rises, then the pancreas releases insulin. And insulin comes in and kind of knocks the blood sugar out of the way. Let me go ahead and eat. And it gets to the door of your cell and says, knock, 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 knock. Kind of like a gentleman, right? Knock, 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 go on in. Okay. Come on in. <laughs> so now insulin has been successful because the cell is sensitive. When the cell is sensitive, it will allow the blood sugar to come into the cell and energy production will be good. Okay. Now, in the situation where there is insulin Insensitivity, so be insensitive. Knock, 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 knock. Not home. Come on. No, nobody's here. Why? You remember we had it all? Well, I guess I went to you for a little while. So, so if you're insensitive, one of the reasons that you might, the, the cell might be insensitive is because, you can say, you've been eating all day. <laughs> you've been eating all day. And I don't need blood sugar. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So I don't, the cell, I don't need you. Just say, I don't need you. I don't need you. 
So that's why the cell won't let the blood sugar in. Because when we eat with great frequency, the blood sugar is elevated all day. Which then means the insulin is high all day. And guess what? Our bodies were not meant for that. Okay. Remember when we used to have three meals a day? Mm -hmm. And if you got hungry, your parents said, wait, it's not going to be long before dinner. Then the industry convinced us that the kids needed snacks. Right? So then it was five meals a day. Then if you're playing sports, they might have the Gatorade, which is introducing carbohydrates. So, uh, what about the Gatorade with no sugar? Um, still, that, I don't know the content. You have to bring the bottle or look at the bottle to see. I want you to be ingredient label readers to see how much carbohydrate is in the food or in the drink, okay? So, insensitivity can also happen because, say, you haven't exercised your thighs all day. Yeah, you haven't exercised your thighs all day. Right. When we exercise, the, the largest muscle group that we have is here in the thigh. So, most people think we need to do aerobics. We need to jog. We need to, I don't know, walk. And those things are good cardiovascularly. However, when it comes to blood sugar, muscle is king. Muscle is king. You have to aggravate the muscles. So you've got to lift weights or do some weight-bearing exercises. I love doing this at my kitchen sink. I like to push and count and shift my legs for 50 counts, and then again for another 50 and another 50. Three sets of 50 is what I like to do at a time. And I like to do that three to four times a day. But doing that is very time efficient. <laughs> Because when I was walking, that was like an hour. When I was dancing, I love to do that as well, that was an hour. But when I do this leg shifting thing at the sink, it takes approximately two minutes. Two minutes. It's amazing. And you know it's effective because why? You're testing your blood sugar every what? Every day. So you know what you did the day before. And because of that, you you will be able to get the feedback as to whether or not your consumption and your exercise is doing the job. And then you can modify it accordingly. Okay? So, muscle ladies, and I know we've been all about the walking and all about the the uh, aerobic stuff. You know, you remember when the aerobics were in? Mm -hmm. All of that, right? All of that is great for the heart. But it's not commanding the intensity on the muscle. And that's where you've got to focus. Okay? So, when cells are sensitive, as Marsha was at first, they allow the glucose in, which then takes it out. If the, if the glucose is going into the cell, then that means it's moving out of the what? Yeah. If it's, it's traveling in the circulatory system, in the blood, right? But the cells, when they're sensitive, and they allow insulin to usher the sugar into the cell, then the sugar is leaving out of your blood. Yes. Okay. All right. That produces energy and good health. When cells are insensitive, the glucose and the insulin hang out in the blood, wreaking all kinds of havoc upon our circulatory system. 
The circulatory system represents your blood vessels, including your arteries, your arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. The circulatory system works closely with the cardiovascular system. That's why when blood sugar is high, it tends to lead to high blood pressure. Okay? Because what happens to the veins and the arteries and all of that is that they start to narrow, they start to harden and get rigid. So when the blood is trying to travel, think about um, a spray hose and you hold it, you collapse the hose. Some water gets through, but not like it's supposed to. Okay? So that is why it registers as pressure, because it's pushing. The blood is pushing. It's trying to get through that narrow vein, that narrow capillary, that narrow artery. It's high pressure. And that is damaging. That can cause heart attack. Strokes, dementia, cancer, even cancer love a high blood sugar environment. COVID, people who contracted COVID, if you had high blood sugar, you were more likely to contract it and to die from it. High blood sugar symptoms include, again, dementia, pain, because it causes inflammation, fatigue, it can't produce the energy because it's not getting into the cells. That's where ATP, which is the energy production, takes place. It can cause things to grow. We associate diabetes type 2 with being heavy. However, many people that are thin have high blood sugar. Okay? It causes things to grow. Insulin is a growth hormone. So it can cause internal fat deposits, which are called visceral fat. That's where people have a fatty liver. It can cause skin tags. Does anybody know of anybody who's ever complained of having skin tags? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I developed a skin tag right here behind my leg. My husband had skin tags. And at that time, in, in the medicine cabinet, you know, there was the skin tag medication. And we had no idea that that was an indication of having a high blood sugar level. When your insulin is high, it causes the growth of unwanted tissue, including tumors. High blood pressure, obesity, we know, insomnia, even. Heart disease, strokes, etc. How do we favorably impact blood sugar? You see these bins that we have on the table? You see the first one is titled fat. What kinds of things represent fat? Bacon. Bacon. Cooking oils. Cooking oils. Cooking oils. Cooking oils. Mm -hmm. Butter. Butter. Red meat. Red meat is fat. It's a combination of fat and protein, so I probably put it in chicken. protein, but you're absolutely right, yes. Chicken? Chicken, yes, but pure fat. Pure lard. fat is going to be like your lard. Yeah, lard. Exactly. You can have red meat, leaf lard. Your, uh, like mayonnaise. And mayonnaise, lard. yes. Um, sour cream. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, when we eat fat, what do you think? Do you think your blood sugar rises, remains the same, goes down? What effect do you think fat? Don't, don't answer, Marsha. 
think it rises, John? You think it rises that? And, and Vanessa, you think it rises? Why do y'all think that? Do you think fat is bad? Not all fat. No. Not all fat. There's some fat is bad. Yes, some fat. Tell me why do you think that? Because when I eat some fried chicken, my blood sugar goes up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you attribute that to the fat, even though the fried chicken represents protein. Mm -hmm. Protein, right, right. It's dredged in flour, mm -hmm. so it represents simple carbs. Mm -hmm. I think it contributes to the salt. Okay. The seasoning. It has, it has yeah. seasoning yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But guess who gets blamed? Fat. Fat. The fat. Mm -hmm. I prepared it. Yeah. The fat mm -hmm. is Right? And we've been socialized to that. Right? There was a time when we were taught fat was fat. Mm -hmm. Remember when the low fat craze came in? Okay. Guess what? When you eat fat, your blood sugar doesn't rise at all. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't rise at all. <laughs> so, when they got us on the avoidance of fat, Guess what happened? Sugar went up. Sugar went up. And what happened to our bodies? Yeah. They got bigger. Right. What happened to the diabetes rate? Sky high. Sky high. When we started avoiding fat, the fat buckles the rise of blood sugar. Now, the second category, protein. When we eat protein, our blood sugar rises a little. When it's a lean protein, but didn't they tell us that? Mm -hmm. Eat lean mm -hmm. meat. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens? When you eat Fatty meat, because there's no fat in the lean. Exactly. The protein causes blood sugar to rise. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cause it to spike, but it causes it to rise. When it's fat meat, it buckles the protein rises. Just think about it. Think about the health of people back in the day when they were eating fatty meat, they were frying in lard, mm -hmm. and their health was better. Okay? Fiber. Fiber buffers the rise. We only get fiber in plants. There's no fiber, none in, none in fat. No fiber is in fat. No fiber is in protein. So why do you think when God created the animal products, he didn't put in any fiber? Dicey. Complex 
ihn.
foot fight. The only exception I have seen to that so far has been with Derry. Because with Derry, this is whole milk. How many cars in that purse? That's when my purse started. Okay. <laughs>
There's the healthcare wheel. There's the hospitality wheel. All of these wheels have to be primed in order for them to keep moving in a circular direction. You make money, now spend the money. That's how the economy works.
So what are we doing every morning? Mm -hmm. Every morning we are doing what? Uh, I am Jewish. No, no. What are we doing? Oh, yeah, every morning. Okay. And that is telling you what? What my blood sugar is. So that's giving you the direction. That's giving you the report card on how what you're doing. Is working. Your blood. Exactly. See, I don't have to tell you. Your blood is what you want to tell you. Mine never fluctuates. Right. Right. So this is a good question that Earl is asking. Because again, that is the beauty of being a blood tracker, a blood blood tester, a blood tracker. Because the blood gives you the answer. Now, Earl, you are not in optimum range. Okay? So you still have some work to do. Okay? So that's, so that's the answer. 94. That's the answer that people know what you need. 85. Between 70 and 85 is your optimum range. What is the difference? I'm, being, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you. Mm -hmm. All you're talking about is blood sugar high. So no, no, that, range, range. Okay, well, range, mm -hmm. but still, it's high blood sugar. It's how you, you you're trying to uh, not get high blood sugar. That's right. That's so right. that's what you're talking about. That is right. And like you're saying, his. 90, 94. 94. 94. Yeah, I don't want you to be complacent. If I walk around here with 94, I'd be out of here right now because mine would be a drop so low. But you well, could have run to the hospital. They would be yeah, at my. So when you test, you go to a hospital for me. Hmm. When you test, what is your. What is your. 1284, was it? Was it? One seventy four. One seventy four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I keep mine up that high. One seventy four. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Or a little bit higher. But that's when I go to bed at night time. I don't want it at ninety, ninety nine. Because no. it's uncomfortable. They would be called because, the hospital. Because when you live high like that, then when you go low, and especially when you're in the, in the medical system. So like I saw a commercial for a continuous glucose monitor. Mm -hmm. And the commercial showed the glucose monitor going off when the person hit 80. Mm -hmm. It said it would give you an alert if you're going too low. Mm -hmm. So then what is the system doing with respect to socializing the mindset of that person. Because what I'm saying is, is that remember, the healthcare system is an economic wheel. It's a business, right? Okay? So if you don't have people, you keep people comfortable, and you teach them that 80 is going too low, well, every time I tell somebody, one of my diabetic friends or something, that, oh, my blood sugar is 70, that's too low. They always say that. There, but but there's you a difference in there too, though. Mm -hmm. That yeah, my mindset is is now. Yes. I know where it, where you know where you're comfortable. You know where you're where comfortable. I have to be exactly at a certain time. I get it. I see. I and I it. know what kind of foods like mm -hmm. where a lot of people get sweets is what keep mine yep. up here. Yep. And it's a, it's a, the whole medicine situation, that's a whole other conversation because it'll drop you and then it'll make, and then you're like, oh, I need some orange juice. Oh, I, I've been up here at the hospital. This is great. They bring more sugar to They bring more hangings. Okay? Monitor your blood. Understand the reference range. Research it. The diabetic ranges, everything's right there for you on Google, mm -hmm. YouTube, all of it. And it tells you 70 mm -hmm. in range. Mm -hmm. 
does age or nationality have anything to do with it? But you know, we're not. Okay. So the answer is that is yes. Okay. Because culturally, we know what we put in our mouth. Culturally, other, you know, ethnic groups, you know, so there is a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's yes, because of what we put in our mouths. And what we put in our mouths has not been, it's not it's an informed decision. It's just what our tradition, <coughs> past our tradition, mm -hmm. has, and we just have come into the ability to touch our own blood. Yeah. It used to be that you could only get it from the doctor, mm -hmm. okay? And if you wait to get the doctor test once every year at your physical or what have you, why does that not help you like knowing your number every day? What's the difference? You <coughs> fluctuate every day. Yeah. You eat because different things. Within a year, things are going to change. Some days are going to be up, some days are going to be down. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. But if you test every day, you know what you did yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. So it gives you that immediate evaluation as to, oh, that was good. My number was in range. How about I have a patty with a hamburger patty, cheese on it, mushrooms, saute, spinach. I worked out my thighs three times. And I'm saying, I'm 75 today. Well, why does mine stay the same? I don't eat the same thing every day. <laughs> yeah, you, that, just, you just got good fortune. Don't, yeah, don't question. <laughs> yeah, good fortune. Good fortune. But what I'm saying is, is that it guides our choices. Like spending our money. We just got paid. We know how to ration that money. Until we get paid the next time. It's a budgeting thing. If you get the feedback every day, you know how to budget. You know what's impacting. You know what takes you high. You know it. You know it puts you in range. So that is the benefit. That A1C, whoever invented it, mm -hmm. you know, you just think you get excited. I'm creative and I'm the one that's trying to invent different tests and different machines and stuff like that. I'm excited every time I can create a new test. And it's a new test, which is more expensive. So then the insurance company gets paid more, mm -hmm. just like the, the new drugs. Some of the older drugs are better and less harmful. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I come in as the pharmaceutical sales rep, and I'm buttering up, is that? And I'm telling her all about this new proton that's 40 milligrams that I got. I want you to give it to the nighttime heartburn sufferers, okay? <laughs> give me the night. When I do that, I now have taken her away. A lot from of times the older that. drugs that she was prescribing before. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a lot of times that you're eating habits that it's a, like mine, when, to me, when this year you say that, mm -hmm. mine changed at a certain age and then at a certain time I started eating different Well, I got married. And my husband always ate something at night time. He always wanted to cook at night time, away in the night time, where I used to have a better eating habit. And then once I started eating late at night, yep. and yep. that's when my that's when I found out my blood sugar started getting worse. Yep. And I didn't find that out until I started rushing to the hospital. And I went down with me rushing to the hospital mm -hmm. all the time. Yep. And then I found out because I changed my eating habit, mm -hmm. then my blood sugar mm -hmm. started getting worse. There you go. And I haven't got any better There you go. And by the time I get here, I make sure I have a number of my diet to carry me through. How do you put yours down? Okay, hold that question. So, 
This is organic sugar cane. How many parts? Okay. 
right. So, what we know is all of these represent what category over here? Sugar, sugar, sugar. I don't see sugar. Oh, this
versus the natural product. So I mean, I don't think I can just give up everything. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about gradual change. Yes. All right, so, um, and then looking at the numbers, and if it makes a difference, then you know kind of what direction to go. Mm -hmm. Or eliminating that particular food group all together. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. It's customization. <laughs> All right. Yep, it's customization. You're in charge. Mm -hmm. And again, test. Because testing motivates. Mm -hmm. It gives you the information. It gives your subconscious mind. It's going to bother you if you know you're bothering you. And that's a good thing. You want to be bothered. Because that will motivate you. The other things that are in the coffee to suppress, because mm -hmm. this does what? Suppress it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the coffee, there's heavy cream, there's lard, there's KG butter, mm -hmm. KG butter, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs>
So Vanessa, let me go back over to Earth because I have him on hold. Okay, okay well, I'm sorry. <laughs>
Walnut oil. Walnuts, they look like the brain, don't they? Mm -hmm. The cauliflower, it kind of looks like a brain, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And both of them are very good for brain. Okay? So, in Earl juice or in anything that is sweet, you can experiment, Earl. Experiment by adding some form of fat. Before you buy like a new fat, you could just experiment with what kind of facts do you have in your house? Um, chicken? Yeah, I have chicken. Yeah, chicken. I don't eat red meat. No, I fat know. though. Like like a liquid oil? Butter. butter. Or butter? Yeah, butter. Okay. Uh, sour cream? No, I don't eat sour cream. You don't eat sour cream? Okay. Um, You said your liquid oils are what kind of oil? Um, canola oil or probably vegetable oil. So you could run an experiment. You could put in some of the canola oil. Shake up, emulsify it. Put it in a jar that has a nice tight lid and shake it until it gets emulsified. Just a little oil, not a lot. Buy gelatin. Now, in the grocery store, they have plain gelatin packets. It, it does not say whether or not it's coursing, which is pork gelatin. So I don't, I don't know. You can probably look it up the container up here. Nope, because I didn't buy it because it didn't indicate what animal it came from. And I wanted to get the pork uh, because the pork gelatin is str the strongest gelatin. And it coats your stomach, your intestines, and everything, uh, preventing food from passing through into your bloodstream. So, where do you get that from? So, I ordered it from Amazon. I was about to do Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you write it down this? Mm -hmm. Did you write it down? Mm -hmm. no, pork gelatin. gelatin. No. And it's considered grade A. <laughs> Only the pork gelatin is considered grade A. And Deb, I see you doing your Aprio. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah, but yeah, the Aprio I have yeah. them here. That's cool. Aprio. Yeah, Aprio is going to buy my pleasure. So, um, so Earl, yeah. apply these basic principles. With the fact that you're wrong. testing, you're going to see whether or not did that help? Did it take you down further? Okay. The best fact, my blood sugar did not come into range until I started using pork fat. Okay. Yep. When I started using the lard and the bacon drippings and all of that, that's when my blood sugar came into range. I make hot tamales and I use the water to make uh, what she Okay. It tastes totally different if you don't use water. To make what? Hot tamales. Okay, hot tamales. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Because 
that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. I just take that, use it. this medicine. Yeah, but you, you can, you, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can make it up like everything. Right, 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 exactly. But no, I take this <laughs> as though it's not me. But it will give you, it is the least expensive way, and you will feel it. You will feel it. Yes. Yeah, we have three minutes. 
Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll be at your back. Will you be back for another one? Yes. Oh, okay. Here's your survey. Oh, Earl, will you be back for another one? Yeah. Just plan to do this. Everybody wants to do this. Okay, don't get the play this time. Oh, uh, okay. I do love you. I do have a vegetable cream cheese. And I'm snacking that. But I should just be getting plain and not like a garden vegetable. Right. If you read your you always read read before okay. you buy. Okay. So you can make those comparisons. Okay. Um, because when it's their concoction, it's gonna have some practice. So I can So it's you know what cool cheese on the veggies get it, like the yeah, yeah, so I can go out and you know right, you get that egg made on there, you can spray off right uh -huh. So I just had some it was good, but you can make it yeah. out. Three times a day. 
My first eating with this plate is a half a shrimp. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
but not the range, I just put a line underneath it. But it gives me a total, and then I have some notes. So when, I, when I'm 91, if I have some notes to look at, I definitely know what to be there. And I do this in my phone, too. In my phone, though, I do emojis. So if I'm in range, I give myself fire, 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 and then the love eyes. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> That's why she can't see me. That's why she can't see me. <laughs>
my side. Okay. And um, I'm going to, uh, since I have more time, I'm going to um, make up my own like, like that. That's definitely a plus. Make mm -hmm. sure. Uh, yeah, make up my own place. Snack something snack. that I can take with me. Mm -hmm. but also, yep. and I can do that. Right in the room. Grab something quick. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if it's already done. Yes. So yeah, that's. Yeah, that will prevent you from having to stop because when you're out, you're going to get hungry. Right. So if you got your little snackies, you're good. Beautiful. Anything else? That's what you're going to do. I'm going to get rid of my potato chips. So <laughs> 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 substitute them for corn chips? Corn yep. chips. For you. All right. <laughs>
think I'm dehydrated, I drink that essential water, so I have to see what's in that. So okay. that does mean it's still Well, I'm, I'm sorry, it'll happen slowly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why. 